Hello there, my fellow demon hunting space marines, and welcome back to another lore video on the Mighty Grey Knights. We have already talked about a fair deal about these guys in the past, no less than 7 videos made already, with this one being the 8th. For today, we are gonna take a break from their units and ranks and history, and talk about something a bit more interpretable. We will cover some of their powerful relics, and the nature and meaning of some of their heraldry and symbology. I am your host, the demon smiting narrator for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Grey Knights have endured for millennia, their chapter built upon a web of traditions and oaths. These sacred customs and doctrines are reflected in the weapons that they use, the armor that they wear, and the heraldry that they bear, each one a part of their proud history. Grey Knight's heraldry is most often depicted upon the portion of their Grey Aegis armor known as the Heraldic Shield. Red, white, and black are the common colors of all the Grey Knights, these being colors used by the first Grandmasters when they forsook their legions and embraced the sacred duty the Emperor had given them. Each icon and color has its own meaning within the chapter. Skulls indicate the quelling of a powerful demonic foe, and swords indicate battlefield honors. Granulated lines, divisions of color, and which color is ascendant all represent a battle brother's position within his brotherhood, the color, direction, and gradient of the line or division each having their own meaning. Grey Knights will sometimes incorporate symbology of their allies into their own heraldry, if they are especially deserving. In this case, the dominant skull bears the icon of the Inquisition, showing a great victory won over a mighty demon foe, but with the aid of one of the Holy Ordos. However, it is rare for these symbols to be adopted, as there are very few allies worthy to earn the respect of the Grey Knights. Sometimes a battle brother will take the icon of an ally that has been exterminated or mind wiped in the aftermath of a battle, thus the only reminder of their existence remains upon the battle brother's heraldic shield, a forlorn reminder of their service to the Grey Knights and the Imperium. The icon of a sword is a powerful symbol within Grey Knights' heraldry. This can represent an act that preserved the Battle Brothers squad, turning the tide of an important confrontation, or brought about the destruction of a hated foe. A white sword on red is a symbol of the Emperor's mercy, an act considered inspired by the Master of Mankind's benevolence. A black sword on red is a measure of the Emperor's wrath, and it is granted for acts of vengeance. Rarer still are red swords on black that show the Emperor's righteous rage, and the madness that faith can bring. A Grey Knight's battle brother who bears a red sword has been driven to the edge of his duty, and managed to claw his way back, bloody but alive. The stylized symbol of the Imperial Aquila is a sacred icon to the Grey Knights, and only its most proven heroes can bear it upon their heraldry. It represents a great deed of service to the Emperor, something so significant as to eclipse all the other glories and take the dominant position upon his shield. Typically, only Grand Masters, Brother Captains and Paladins will be seen wearing this honor, but in rare cases a Justicar or Battle Brother can also bear the symbol should they be worthy of the honor. The nature of this service is as varied as the Battle Brothers honored by it. The only commonality, their devotion to the Emperor, and the favor of the Grand Masters. Symbols can be overlaid on a Grey Knight's heraldry to indicate a combination of meaning and the deeds they represent. The white sword blade driven through the horn skull depicts an act of the Emperor's mercy that brought about the destruction of a powerful demonic creature. While the Grey Knight will have destroyed the monster, it may have been at the expense of an innocent life and it is thus considered an act of benevolence. These deeds define a Grey Knight, and often a battle brother will no further modify his heraldry after such an event, to show that at this moment he was the most true in his duty to the Emperor. Sometimes a Grey Knight will be called upon to step beyond the realms of reality, to hold back the minions of the Dark Gods. This can mean stepping into the warp itself, 
walking upon demon worlds, or standing under skies that weep with the stuff of chaos. A battle brother who lives through such an ordeal might mark it upon his heraldry as a stylized flame. A skull, sword, or other marking will be depicted as wreathed in this flame, showing that the deed in question was committed in a place where the power of demons held sway. It is accepted that the victory won within the warp is far harder than one won in the material realm. A battle brother who can best his foes while bathed in the dark radiance of the dark gods is a mighty warrior indeed. Some holy chapter relics of theirs include. Unfortunately, I couldn't find pictures for all of these. The Augury Malefica. This was crafted by the Techno Seers of the Grey Knights chapter. It is a heavily modified Auspex scanner, and it is barely recognizable as the original device. Strange attachments have been added, subtle alterations have been made, and seven rituals of detestation were performed to consecrate the augury. The result is a piece of equipment that can, with a reasonable degree of accuracy, detect the malignant auras of demons in the vicinity, and even, on rare occasions, predict an imminent warp breach. However, the augury is not in the possession of the Grey Knights anymore. Instead, it is in the vaults of the Death Watch, without the blessing of the Grey Knights, for they are entirely unaware that the Death Watch has it in the first place. Rather, they believe it lost to the foul hands of the Wordbearer's traitors, and have been actively seeking its recovery for years. The Blade of Antwyr the Blade of Antwyr is a warp spawned weapon that was captured by the chapter and it is impervious to all means of destroying it. The Grey Knights were reluctant to simply cast the dangerous artifact into the void of space, where they know that eventually a new bearer will be drawn to its evil, or to seal it away in a vault within their fortress monastery, as it would only invite corruption to the chamber's guardians. A fateful decision was made to place the Black Blade of Antwyr into the safest prison that the Grey Knights can conceive, the hands of the chapter's purifiers. Castellan Garen Crow is the current guardian of this accursed weapon. It continuously brings him into both physical and spiritual peril by tempting him with chaotic promises of power, or seeking to bind his will with black sorcery. The Bone Shard of Solor this bleached relic was carved from the thigh bone of Brother Captain Solor. Used as a stake to slay the bloodthirster Kabanda, the shard has ever since been the bane of beasts, especially those dedicated to the blood god Khorne. When the veil between the warp and reality grows thin, the bone begins to vibrate, the ancient essence of Solor reacting to the taint of demons and protecting the bearer from their otherworldly claws and blades. The Domina Liber Demonica. Many Grey Knight Battle Brothers carry with them a copy of the Liber Demonica, a tool that can be as vital to vanquishing demons as the blade or the boulder. The Domina Liber Demonica is a relic of the Supreme Grandmaster Janus, the only Grey Knight to ever master all 666 words of banishment, each one recorded on its pages. In times of need, a hero of the chapter will carry the book into battle, its bindings crackling with arcane power as the words fill the air and lend the Battle Brothers blows the power to send demons back into the warp. The Fury of Deimos When the moon of Deimos was gifted to Titan by the Adeptus Mechanicus, it carried with it a void ship loaded with some of the finest weapons ever made in the Imperium. Among them was the Stormbolter Fury of Deimos, a weapon crafted by the first Fabricator General. No, not the filthy traitor Kelbor Hal. Superior in range, accuracy, rate of fire, and reliability than a normal Stormbolter, it is a relic whose secrets have long been forgotten. The Nemesis Banner Anointed in the blood of no less than a dozen Grand Masters, the Nemesis Banner is one of the chapter's most powerful relics. It is abhorrent to the creatures of the warp, its psychic light burning so bright that demons cannot bear to look upon it, their very essence burned away the closer they come to it. The Soul Glaive 
Over centuries of war, a fraction of a Grey Knight's psychic essence may imprint itself upon a weapon, literally becoming an extension of his being. In rare cases, this imprint is so powerful that it persists even after death, and another can wield the blade in battle to combine his own power with that of a fallen hero. The Soul Glaive is one such weapon, a halberd that in generations past was carried into battle by the Supreme Grandmaster Lord Silas Calthorn, who defeated the demon prince Kalazar in single combat. The Terminus Decree Deep within the Chambers of Purity, in the Grey Knight's Fortress Monastery on Titan, locked away in a chamber said to hold the tomb of Malkador the Sigilite himself, rests a simple wooden box, embellished with a golden seal. Within this mysterious box, written upon ancient parchment, is the instruction known only as the Terminus Decree. This artifact goes unrecorded in all the libraries of the Imperium, for it has been kept secret from all of the Imperium apart from the Supreme Grand Masters of the Grey Knights. Only a Supreme Grand Master knows how to open the box, and he will do so only when all hope for humanity is lost. The Terminus Decree is the ultimate sanction of the Grey Knights, a secret so powerful that it can bring the Imperium to its knees, or save it in the darkest hour. The exact nature of this document is unknown, and the only clue to its contents lies in the box's golden seal. It is whispered that this is the exact match for one other seal, found only in one place in the Imperium. The Emperor's Golden Throne. The Titan Sword This is a relic of the earliest days of the Imperium, and it has been entrusted to the Supreme Grand Master of the Grey Knights ever since their records began. Stories of this nemesis force blade give it many names. The Mind's Edge, the Fobane, and Life Drinker, to name just a few. Legends say that the Emperor made the blade for a favored general in the Unification Wars on Terra, teaching him how to use his mind to trigger its terrible powers. During the Great Crusade, it then passed into the hands of his champions, spilling alien blood on a thousand worlds as humanity reclaimed the stars. When Malkador the Sigilite took the first Grey Knight to Titan, one of the relics he carried with him was rumored to be this ancient sword. Along with his pure genetic legacy and psychic power, it was one of the gifts of the Emperor to the newly founded chapter. Renamed the Titan Sword by Janus, the first Supreme Grand Master, the blade must be psychically attuned to each new owner. Only once it is key to the mind of the wielder can its true killing power be called upon. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the symbols and the relics of the Grey Knights for today. What are your thoughts on some of these artifacts? Which one do you think is the most potent? Do you know of any others that I didn't mention today? Let us all know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And if you'd like to help keep my channel alive in the future, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects!